everyone, it's really her. Welcome to clip eight. That isn't clickbait. Yes, it is. Okay, in the last episode, we reviewed C through G and back to C. And it sounds like this. C, D, E, F, G, F, E, D, C. Now, I'm sure you probably might remember when I taught you that C is right below these two sharps. And it makes the fun jingle noise. Um, and D is in between them. And it makes this fun jingle noise. But you can also remember it as being the one directly above C. And it sounds like this. Which is not as fun as this. Because it's got more notes. But my favorite is B, even more than the D. Because it sounds like the Adam Sandler. Because it's marked by these three sharps. It sounds like this. Now, we also learned the step. Let's go back to the computer. You remember computer, right? Good computer. Now, we have the staff. Those are these weird lines. Um, we also looked at whole notes, half notes, and quarter notes. Um, and here you will see half notes and quarter notes. Now, quarter notes are just dots with a stick. They're super simple, super easy to understand. They are worth one beat. Next is the half note. And it's called that because it's supposedly half the measure. Even if it's not 4-4, four, four, it's still called the half note and it's worth two beats. Now, let's go up. Now, you're probably mad at me because I didn't show you the whole note. And here it is. Here's the whole note right here. And here, and here. It is worth all four beats. And we have broom ones here instead of monsters. Because I lost the PDF. And this is the um, olden days version. Um, but now we can understand what this says. Because before it was Australian, no one can understand that. Now, one whole note, two half notes. And for chord notes. Now remember, one of these, two of these, and four of these all equal one entire little staff chunk if it is in 4-4. Four, four. Now these little measure things, that's what they're called measures, need to be filled all the way with occasionally rest, but we're not going to learn about rests today. Today, you go down. By the way, this we're just gonna pretend it isn't there. Sorry, five playing the ignoring game. Now here in Dance of the Gnomes instead of March of the Gnomes, we have three, four, and the dotted half note. Oh no, I have to sneeze. I have to sneeze. Ooh, I lost it. Okay, that's good. Now you will notice this gremlin guy is pointing to. A half note, but it's got a mysterious speck. No, no, that's not on the computer. And it's not on the camera, no, no. This is actually in the PDF, and it's also on tons of others because it's the dotted half note. It is worth three beats instead of two. Also remember, three, four, three beats. So we got one, two, three. 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 And so on. I almost hit his knees again. Okay. Um. Remember, you have to play these songs. I don't just show you them for a reason, but you need you need to know how to play them. So I'm gonna show you. Here's down to the notes. I'm gonna count. Just because. One, two, three. 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 One,
stop right there and here's why you already know how to play this but you're probably thinking Charlie no I don't you didn't show me actually I did three times look when you when you're playing songs you have to look for patterns so you can get muscle memory which I'm also gonna teach you on a later lesson but look they're all repeating in a giant pattern of four. And you also might notice that in March of the Gnomes, it's repeating in patterns of two. Now, we're going to practice March of the Gnomes again. And Dance of the Gnomes. Which is not an again moment, it's a yay a new song moment. Don't be mad. So now... We are going to move on to some Charlie Magic. Now, I am going to teach you what these notes down below under do. Now, some people keep a list I know I do. I even have a little script for what I have to say. But, these little pedals down here all do different things. Some are one of them is super complicated. One of them is not that complicated. One is super easy to do. Now, one that you'll probably use most often is the one on the far right. This is the sustain pedal. You press it down. Well, actually, let's not press down. And let's just play middle C. Sounds normal, right? But if I hold this down, and if I hold C, and then press down, same effect. Now let's go to the far left, the damper pedal. Now, before I go on to the damper pedal, I must tell you that this sustain pedal goes well with the damper pedal. Like, if I'm playing a song, six in the morning and they'll wake everyone up it's not even gonna sound good with this but it's still super loud and this damper pedal when I press it look at the notes whoa why aren't they moving that's one of the mysteries of piano but I know what that does by moving all of these notes, now let's look into the piano for a moment and have some piano science. Now, when I hit a note, you'll see that a hammer pops up and hits the three strings. Three strings are hit. And it also lifts, hidden in the piano, a little damper spot, but you can't see it because this camera is too chunky and fat. But it hits it, and that's all that matters. But when pressing the damper pedal, those hammers will move. And instead of hitting all three and making it super loud, it only hits two. Ha! <coughs> I found that sneeze. <coughs> and it brought friends. Okay. Now the most complicated one. <coughs> The middle one is super special because it holds down chords and not normal notes. Like, let's say I want to play this and then play. <coughs> but not have these hold down. But I want this to hold down. And I want to take my hand off. That's where the middle comes in handy. Now. You have to be pressing it and, no, um, you have to be playing the chord and then press it down and it holds, right? Seems a lot like the damper, right? Wrong. 
if I play. Charlie Magic, and you're also done with the computer. So you're thinking what to do. What to do is you need to practice. But, till then, see you. Until next time.